it's the question we've all been asking ourselves lately, should I get an e-bike? If you're one of these big global mountain bike networks or a sponsored rider that's getting one for free, then absolutely you'll take a new e-bike. I know I'll take one. How about you guys? But for the rest of us, average riders, the decision isn't quite so simple. So in today's video, I'm going to be giving you guys the top three reasons why you should get an e-bike right now in 2023 and three other reasons why you might not want to get an e-bike just yet. But let's go ahead and start on a positive note with the top three reasons why you should get an e-bike in 2023. All starting with reason number three. You love having the newest tech. And with the way these bikes have been advancing lately, they got newer, lightweight models that are getting closer and closer to performing just as well as a regular mountain bike on the downhill on those jump lines while still giving you all that power and torque to climb your way up the mountain getting way more laps in and having a ton more fun with new bikes like the Trek Fuel EXE, the Obeya Rise, and the Specialized Levo SL. It's no wonder more and more people are starting to jump into the e-bike game. Which brings me to reason number two to get an e-bike, you hate climbing. Maybe you're a rider that's struggling a little bit with their fitness, or you just wanna conserve that energy so you can save it for the downhills. Or maybe you're a rider like me that's just sick and tired of how damn long it takes you to get all the way to the top of the f***ing mountain. With an e-bike, you can climb easier, get way more downhill laps in, and have a ton of fun, which brings me to reason number one, getting more laps. I was riding the other day, came back down, rode one black diamond trail to the top and down, was over an hour and a half just climbing up and then riding back down. Found three other e-bikers in the parking lot chilling, drinking a beer. They had already done three laps. They rode the trail I rode, they rode another black diamond trail, and a third trail all in less time than it took me to go up and ride one trail down. So one of the top reasons that I've looked into getting an e-bike is getting in those extra laps. Now, let's cover the top three reasons why you might wanna wait to get an e-bike. Starting with reason number three to not get an e-bike, technology. But wait a minute, Jared, I thought technology and having that newest, latest, and greatest tech is one of the reasons why you said you should get an e-bike. Well, it could also be one of the things that could hold you back brand new motors that they just created, brand new lightweight components. These things are gonna have a little bit of a trial and error period. And e-mountain bikes have been advancing so rapidly and so much lately, I just can't help but wonder how much better these e-bikes will be in two, three, even five years from now. So why not just save up a little bit of that cash wait a little bit longer for people to get all the bugs and corks worked out of this newer technology and buy one of these bikes when it comes out bulletproof, ready to shred. Which brings me to reason number two on why you shouldn't get an e-bike, maintenance and DIY ability. Now these e-bikes, as that technology advances and with these motors, batteries, a lot of the different internal components, you can't work on them yourself. Not only can you not work on these things yourself, but just with the way these things ride, how many more laps you're gonna be getting in, how much harder you're gonna be pushing that drivetrain, you're gonna be wearing out your drivetrain, your tires, your brakes. So the cost of that maintenance is a definite reason why you might not wanna get an e-bike. Which brings me to the number one reason why you shouldn't get an e-bike, and that is the cost. These bikes just are ridiculous in their price. Anywhere from bottom line bikes at five, six thousand dollars, all the way up to fourteen, fifteen thousand dollars for a mountain bike. Goodness gracious! And I know myself, I'm not really into getting one of the super low end spec bikes that I'm gonna have to upgrade that much. So the ballpark range for me is somewhere around eight to nine thousand dollars. I gotta come up with to get one of these new e-bikes. And like I said, as that technology is quickly and rapidly advancing, it kind of makes me wonder, all that money I'm gonna put down, $9,000 down now, in three to five years, when they've really came out with the bike, 
that truly answers everything I want in an e-mountain bike and is truly bulletproof, will I even be able to resell my current e-bike that I did or didn't buy? And will some of that advanced technology trickle its way down to lower end models, making e-bikes eventually and hopefully a little bit more affordable for the average riders like us that aren't sponsored by some giant global mountain biking network, you know who I'm talking about, or a pro brand deal. So should you buy an e-bike? Well, that's just three reasons why I think you should or why you shouldn't buy an e-bike. But I wanna hear from you guys. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you guys think about this. And if you guys are curious and seeing any of the other videos I've made testing regular mountain bikes like my Slash to e-bikes like the Trek Rail, go ahead and click on that video right there. And as always, get stoked, go ride, and have some fun, people.